The title of this solo podcast is The Secret of Otherworldly Success. You know, it seems to be the fashion uh, in writing that you hold the secret or the, uh, the climax until the end and you um, build up to it. I don't really believe in such things. I like to reveal it at the beginning because, quite frankly, whenever there's a build-up to things, usually it almost never pans out. So uh, I don't believe in playing games. The secret to otherworldly success is purity. What does that mean? When someone fantasizes uh, or dreams of becoming a success, the crux and the essence of that dream centers around the periphery of the success, what someone will get, how wealthy they will become, how it will feel to have finally, quote, made it. All These are all the fringes and the benefits and the pleasures of success. So the dreams of success are never really about the thing. They're almost always about the, the pleasurable aspects of what the success will gain someone. That is impure. Now, in that very breath, I must state that there is no right or wrong, and there is no rule that one must be pure. Uh, there, everything happens, everything that is of any importance happens um, due to the effect, not due to rules. So the effect of doing things impurely is that one never has his full faculties at his command. He is always subservient to the pleasure of the outcome. He is always enslaved to the execution of whatever needs to be executed while not having all of his tools available to him because what he is chasing is the pleasurable outcome or the award or the money or the trophy or whatever it may be. The cause of chasing pleasure the cause of chasing the fringe benefits of success naturally and necessarily leads to the effect of being handcuffed as one pursues that success. Therefore, the real-world consequence of impurity is ineffectiveness. When something is done from a pure standpoint, then one is chasing the thing itself. Now, even this must be looked at with open eyes. An individual might, for instance, have grown up in poverty, and that person's success, that person's goal, might be to become wealthy. Wealthy for wealthy's sake, just to escape poverty. Since there are no rules, there is no good and bad, there is no morality. If that person is pure in his desire for wealth, because it frees him from a life of poverty, if that is pure in his heart, then that is not a fringe benefit. So it, this is where society will really fall apart. Uh, this is a bridge that it cannot cross because it is 
it is uh, so handcuffed and straitjacketed by rules that it cannot see beyond the blinders of its own false moral senses. When one does thing for the, something for the purity of it, because the thing itself is what drives him, and it is not done for the fringe benefit or for the, um, the door prize, so to speak, uh, then one gains all of the faculties that one needs. All of his talents become available to him. And I'll explain why that is. The Behind every success, there's often a great insecurity. The insecurity of wondering if one will make it. And that insecurity, that fear of not being able to make it, actually leads to a flailing of the arms and a running in all directions and uh, a, a hard working and a beating oneself to the bone and bloodying one's hands and all of the romantic ideas that are the natural offshoots of something that is driven by fear, something that is driven by anxiety. So when that is not there, when the feeling of anxiety or fear of not making it is not there, then the quality of one's efforts and the quality of one's pursuit changes drastically. When, when it is no longer part of the equation that one may not make it, one's entire life, the entire complexion of one's journey changes. I will say that in, in, in almost all cases, the pursuit of success is always spurred by a fear of failure. So if, through whatever means, one recognized that making it was a certainty, then the things that he would and would not do would be drastically different than the things he would and would not do if he were spurred by the anxiety and the, fit, fit and the fear of possibly not making it. So where there is purity, where there is a, a sense of doing something for a very focused, in a very focused way, for a very focused outcome, to arrive at the truth about whatever one's domain is, whatever one's craft, whatever one's art may be, one begins to feel in his heart that that thing is accessible because of the purity with which he is pursuing it. And it, it must be repeated, it must be underscored that this purity is not a rule. It is not good to be pure. It is not proper or correct. It is simply effective. It is simply the way to do things that results in the least interference. It is the way to approach things that allows one to have all of his faculties and his talents in his back pocket. Perhaps the greatest misunderstanding in the world of performance among sports psychologists and business coaches and motivational speakers and the whole lot is this idea that performance is a goal and it is fundamentally not true. Performance is a side effect. If it is viewed as a goal, it fails. The world is enamored by the idea of skill acquisition across all professional sports and all domains of business and entertainment and, and Olympics and whatever it may be. The idea that is in the water, the central tenant upon which all 
pursuits are based with regards to coaching in the world of performance is that skill acquisition is the god. That acquiring skill is the most important thing. But in all of my experiences, and in all of my experimentations, and in my examinations, and in my dissections of this topic over many years, I have discovered that skill acquisition is not, by any means, the biggest problem of elite individuals. Their problem is skill access. If one has a million dollars in the bank, but he can only access 400,000. The solution is not to deposit more money in the bank. And yet this is exactly what all sports psychologists and performance coaches around the world do. The real solution is to find out why it is that one has a million dollars in the bank, but he can only access 400,000. So skill access, this is a problem of access. It is not a problem of acquisition because this individual has already acquired the amount that's in the bank. But he is $600,000 short in his ability to access it. So the world seems to have everything on its head. It seems to look at everything backwards. And it is no reason that, uh, well, it's no wonder that everyone goes astray uh, because they are subject to false ideas, ideas that are based upon opinion and tradition and not based upon truth. So if one views things from the sense of purity, if one views things from the sense of discovering what it is that really moves that person and arrives at the point in which the idea and the poison of not of possibly not making it is removed then that person gains access to all of his skill and he saves many, many years in his pursuit of the otherworldly success. And the more pure he becomes, the less he cares about failures along the way, and the more he views them as experimentations. Naturally, not by some motivational quote. Naturally. This is a natural offspring. This is a natural byproduct of. All otherworldly things are side effects. If they are pursued as goals, they fail. If one views things from the standpoint of purity, and if that purity is refined and refined until nothing but the vision remains, otherworldly success will chase a man to the ends of the earth. Good night.